Great. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight for this uh, Zoom presentation on joining the Providence Art Club as an exhibiting artist or arts professional member. Um, for those of you who are just joining, I just mentioned, if you happen to be on this on two devices for some reason, please get off of the second device because there was a little bit of an echo earlier. Um, and then for the people who are on the Arts Qualification Committee, when you're introducing yourself, remember to unmute yourself and then mute yourself when you're done speaking so that there isn't an echo. That should solve the problem. Um, so what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna share just a few quick images of the art club and give a very, very brief overview of what the Providence Art Club is and what we're all about at the Providence Art Club. And then I'm gonna turn the meeting over to Nancy Gosher Thomas, who is the current chair of the Arts Qualification Committee and also our esteemed president emeritus at the Providence Art Club. Um, so first, Allow me to just share my screen. Um, one moment. Let's see. Oh, wait. Sorry. Um, okay. Said if nothing else, this meeting will uh, disabuse anyone of any fear they have of this committee because. We're all like technologically illiterate here. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so just to give you the briefest possible overview of the Providence Art Club, I wanted to share a few images of the art club to give you a sense of what the art club is like. Um, we were founded in 1880 to promote art culture. We have these beautiful buildings in Providence. All four of these buildings on College Hill belong to us. Um, within these buildings, you'll find our cafe, which serves lunch on weekdays and does a lot of special events and private functions and all kinds of wonderful stuff like that. Um, we have three dedicated gallery spaces that are always free and open to the public. Um, we're also home to 15 private artist studios that we rent to members of the club. Um, and it's just a wonderful place. Um, so we've been doing exhibitions on Thomas Street since the 1890s. This is an image of that. Um, we put up new exhibitions every three weeks, if you can believe it. Um, and our galleries are always free and open to the public. You're always welcome to stop in and visit our shows, whether you're a member or not. Um, and it's a great place to meet fellow artists, fellow Rhode Islanders, um, and to join in the camaraderie that the art club is all about. In addition to our contemporary shows, we also do regular exhibitions of our private collection as well as uh, loaned work. So this is a recent show that we did about Angela O'Leary that just ended not that long ago. Um, and camaraderie is the center of the art club. This is an image from the 1890s of some of our founders engaging in our signature camaraderie um, in our cabaret room. And we still use that room today. This is an image of it. Um, it's a wonderful spot. Um, there's a poem on the wall by Rudyard Kipling and Harry Houdini supposedly had lunch in this room and it's just a very storied, beautiful place and lunch is wonderful at the art club. Um, this is another part of our cafe where we do lunch on weekdays. Um, you know, just, it's incredible that, you know, we use these spaces every day at the art club as if it's, you know, our home or, you know, just any other place. And it's sort of impossible to believe that we've been using these spaces since the late 1880s and that the members of today use them very much in the same way that members of the past have used them. Um, and it's fun to be part of that history and to, to engage with it and, uh, and to keep the spirit of the art club alive all these years later. Um, another great space that we all love very much is our Angels Lane Bar, which you can see here. Um, we, we house some of our permanent collection in this room. This space is also open to the public, so you can visit here whether you're a member or not. Um, and you can, you know, visit with friends and, and come to our openings and all kinds of stuff. Um, the other um, sort of pillar of the art club, you know, if there's three things the art club is about, it's camaraderie, um, exhibitions, and education. Um, and education is an enormous part of what we do. This is a look into our uh, studio classroom in a class with Michelle Mazone on pastel. Um, in the course of any given year, we host over 70 classes and workshops now. We have summer workshops and winter workshops and um, 10 week classes and eight week classes. We have a print studio. We have so much going on. It is unbelievable. Um, we also do a lot of um, public gallery programming. Um, every artist who shows at the art club has to take part in a public program during their exhibition. So just today we did a program um, and we do in the average month, I would say we do, you know, three to four public programs um, like this that are free and open to the public and allow people to ask questions of artists. 
Um, and then this is another uh, recent public program in another gallery. Um, so, you know, that is my the briefest possible overview I could give of the art club. You know, for over 140 years, we've been here on Thomas Street, um, you know, showing art, engaging with artists and enabling people to engage in conversation with, with one another about art. Um, as an exhibiting artist member, um, you get to show in our galleries. As an arts professional member, you typically would not be showing in our galleries, but we do have a couple shows each year usually that, um, that um, arts professional members can participate in. Um, and as an exhibiting artist member, you typically get to be in a group show once every two years and have a solo show um, once every five years. We also do uh, two big members exhibitions with prizes, one in the fall and one in the winter. And we do Little Pictures, which is our famous sort of uh, winter show um, and all kinds of other stuff is going on. Yeah. So if you have any questions about the gallery side of things, or if you'd like to come and visit the club and sort of walk through the club with me, please send me an email. You all have my email because you got the Zoom link for me tonight. Don't be shy. Please reach out. I'd be happy to talk more with you. Um, and without further ado, I am going to stop sharing my screen so that Nancy Gosher Thomas can share her screen. So Nancy, I shall uh, ask you to unmute. Thank you, Michael. And for anybody that doesn't know, Michael is our gallery manager. He is um, he is quite the um, well. He's the I don't want to say the jack of all trades, but he wears many hats, and he's exceptional at all of them. Um, so I want to welcome everyone. I'm Nancy Gosher Thomas, as Michael just said. I am going to share my screen. Let's see. Okay. And I think I can play. How does that look? Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So welcome everyone. And what does it take to become an exhibiting artist or arts professional member of the Providence Art Club? I believe that this is our third presentation. Um, we started these um, about three years ago uh, before COVID. And um, just as people were interested in learning more and more about how to become a member of the art club, um, we thought, why not take it to Zoom? Because here we're reaching a whole lot more people, larger audience, and um, it gives them the opportunity to find out a little bit more about who we are. Um, Michael, thank you for your overview, beautiful presentation. Um, so the Arts Qualifications Committee, here we are, um, Sandra Basile, hi Sandra, Del Beret Bach, Claudia Inicelli, Craig Mastin, Merle Poulton, who is not here, uh, Mimo Gordon-Riley, Gretchen Dow Simpson, who is not here, and David Whitbeck. And of course, staff, Michael Rose, gallery manager, and Abba Kudney is the education coordinator. You'll be hearing more from, from these folks a little bit later on as we get into um, um, what they, how they, how they um, determine their criteria and evaluation for um, artists becoming artist members. So here we go. Applying for exhibiting artist status can be a daunting, we know, unnerving task. We've, we've all been there, right? Um, not so scary. So we all know this painting, The Scream, and sometimes we all feel this way, but it's really not that. It's really not that bad. So there are two types of membership in this category, exhibiting artists, which includes the fine arts, two-dimensional, painting, pastel printmaking, drawing, mixed media, three-dimensional, sculpture, glass, mixed media, furniture, assemblage, textiles, jewelry, digital, photography, computer-generated computer digital art. So this is what basically what the application looks like. Um, it is a few more pages um, and this is something that if you were to apply as an artist member, this is one of the pieces that you would receive in your packet. 
Then there is arts professional application that could include architects, landscape architects, art educators, museum directors, curators, gallery owners, graphic designers, fashion designers, set designers, art scholars. Art, arts professionals may also apply later to transfer their status to exhibiting artist member if desired. So we find that a lot of um, patron members and arts professional members um, will take classes. Um, many of them are finding this is a, many of are, are retired and they're finding that this is something that they'd like to do. So they start to take classes and then they realize that this is something that they're really interested in and then they wanna change their status to exhibiting artist members so that they can exhibit in our galleries. So when you fill out an application, these are the things that must be submitted. So five original framed works that are ready for installation. We wanna see um, basically um, a consistent, your, a consistent way in which you uh, frame your works, uh, 10 to 30 individual JPEG images, which may include the five original um, images that you would submit in person, a uh, resume. And I wanna say about the resume, you know, there are a lot of artists out there who are self-taught. So um, don't be, don't be, um, scared, nervous by that whole resume education thing. You know, we know that there are many, many artists who are self-taught. Um, and so really for us, for the Arts Qualifications Committee, it really is the art speaks for itself. The art is 80% 80, 80 of the application. Artist statement, press clippings, uh, new members must submit a completed application, which you just saw with signed disclaimer. And you're required to have two proposers, one of which must be an artist member. Um, and I've just put this in here. The committee may ask to see, all depending on, you know, we're a pretty large committee and we do have very spirited um, conversations. Um, and there may be times when we have questions about some of the work. So there may be times when we would ask for additional work to be submitted. And we do meet the first Tuesday of each month. Here are some of the evaluation criteria, overall impact, quality, consistency in design and artistic vision within a body of work, design, originality and composition, technical proficiency, use of materials, craftsmanship, professional presentation, quality of presentation regarding resume, digital images, and actual work and your framing is very important. Professional experience, participation in professional jury exhibits, awards, commissions, grants, fellowships, et cetera. And as I said, the, the committee will go into further comment about their own personal criteria. Now these, I'm gonna, the next thing, the next slide you're about to see are, um, examples of arts professional and exhibiting artists. So here we have a new arts professional, Anya Sirota. Um, this is her portfolio. This is a very refined portfolio. Um, so that is basically the, the, the cover. Now, you will, you're, you're asked to submit um, a flash drive, but this could also be submitted as a hard copy. This is just going through some of the pages that were in her portfolio. And apparently she was doing this, this project that she was working on was um, for architects and urban designers specializing in public space and cultural infrastructure. So this is just a, a look into the type of graphics that she provided for them. So apparently this was an installation.
and you can see how just very clean the photography is. I wanted to say that, you know, you can take your own photographs. A lot of us are, are quite capable of taking photographs, but just beware of uh, photographing works under glass or um, photographing works with frames. Typically, we want to see just the work. We don't want to see the frames in the um, on your on your uh, electronic presentation. This is another arts professional, graphic designer. Oh, sorry. So he was showing um, some of the periodicals and brochures that he had done, booklet. This was a press kit. This uh, presentation was done by one of our uh, members of the committee, Claudia Inicelli. She is a textile and costume conservator. As you can see, presentation is, is pretty important to us. And then we go into some works by um, some applications, I should say, from exhibiting artists. Uh, Ruth Clegg, who is a photographer and printmaker. Um, this happens to be, I think we're showing all of, all of what you're seeing are, are prints. And they're nicely, um, they're nicely, what do I want to say, they're nicely framed out so that um, you have this band of gray above and below that really kind of accentuates the, the image. This is a new um, exhibiting artist, Ellen Mayer. She works in collage. And again, we're not seeing any of the frames. We're just seeing the artwork, it's very clean. Crisp. And consistent. Consistency is very important. When we talk about framing, it should be consistent in style. When we mount when we mount a show, when Michael and his team mount a show, it's um, it's best to see um, an exhibit that is consistent in a framing style, so that we're so that we're not kind of jumping all over the place in terms of if we're looking at gold frames, black frames, um, different size frames, um, in terms of the width of the molding. The back of the frame gives you an idea of what it is that we're, we were looking at. Identification. That was easy, right? So um, if you want to jot down some of these names, um, membership chair, Joan McConaughey. Uh, if, you're in, if you're interested in any more information about membership, you can contact Joan or you can contact um, Michael Rose, his um, email is here. You can also get more information on the website at providenceartclub.org. We also have Judy Vilmaine who is on the membership committee here. And um, now we'll go to some questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing.
So for um, the question answer portion, if you would put your questions in the chat, I'll read them so that everyone can hear the questions. Um, so that's clear to the whole group what, what the question is. Um, let's see. And thank you, Nancy. That was very, that was good. Well, thank you. And I would um, echo what Nancy said that you shouldn't be um, intimidated by it. Um, is someone, is that you, Nancy, sharing your screen? No, I don't think, no, that's, no. You are viewing Margarita's screen. Oh, let's see. It's a lovely image. Um, <laughs> there we go, great, thank you. Um, yeah, so if you have questions, please put them in the chat and I'll be happy to read them for the group. Um, like Nancy said, you really shouldn't feel too intimidated by it. I think the fact that, um, you know, you need a sponsor and a seconder. I think all of those, all the steps, I think kind of intimidate people, but the committee is a, a very nice group of people. They're very interested in, you know, supporting artists and then, you know, um, really looking at the work first. That's typically how they operate. Um, and they really respond to the artwork they're looking at. Um, and then if you need, you know, some pointers, you know, we're happy to, uh, to help. Um, so the first question is, how many uh, members are currently at PAC? That's a great question. Um, right now, I think our membership level right now is at 640 or something like that. Um, in the 630 to 650 range is usually where we're at. Um, and about half of those, about 250, are exhibiting artists to give you a sense of what the breakdown is like. Um, the second question is, how would you recommend going about finding sponsors? That's a great question. I would say that's one of the chief questions um that we that we get um one great way of meeting people who are already members of the club is to attend openings or you know take a workshop or a class at the art club you would probably be surprised how many people you know who are members of the club i mean if you live in rhode island or even in southeastern mass or in connecticut the likelihood that you know someone who's a member i think is high uh, and i think people are always surprised when they find out you know some friend of theirs is a member and they didn't realize mm -hmm. um that being said, we typically do not give out a member list, um, but we can connect you with our membership committee and they'd be happy to talk to you and have lunch with you and, and learn more about you. Um, so it, it, again, it's not as hard as it sounds. We do try to make it um, a little more accessible. Um, and then Linda, uh, Linda has the question, do you need to pay a monthly fee to be a member? So yes. So um, there is an initiation fee for both arts professional and exhibiting artist members. And there is a monthly fee um, and there's also a cafe minimum. And in Nancy's slide, she mentioned that you can find all of that now on our website under the membership section. And if you have questions about the fees and um, stuff like that, you can contact me and I'll be happy to um, put you in touch with Julia Hubbard, who's our membership coordinator. Um, and she can talk more with you about, about that kind of stuff. Um, Let's see. Um, so Marguerite Pyle asked, uh, I understand we need to have five completed framed items and 10 to 30 JPEGs. What do you do if you have framed artwork? Um, so like Nancy said, and I mean, Nancy, if you want to like interrupt me, feel free. But like Nancy said, in the committee meeting, in the virtual images, they don't want to see the frame. They just want to see the artwork itself, no frame. The frame is really most important for the five works that you're going to deliver in person because it's from those five works that the committee assesses your presentation and the way that works are presented. Um, and like Nancy said, consistent framing tends to be received quite well. Um, and if you have questions about what our expectations are for framing and for preparation on the gallery side, you can email me as you're preparing um, because I personally don't vote in the meetings, but like if something is delivered and is something we clearly could not install, then I'll tell the committee like we can't install that in the gallery. Um, so um, it, does that, Nancy, do you, does that like answer Absolutely. the question? Correctly? Okay. Absolutely. Um, Paula asked, I am not a member. Um, should I be gathering information to become a patron member or rather than an artist member? Um, if so, who do I contact to learn about the protocol? Um, so that's a great question, Paula. So the difference between a patron member and an artist member and an arts professional member is like, as an example, a patron member would be someone who's like a lawyer, a doctor, you know, a professional who's not affiliated with the arts, but who wants to be part of the camaraderie and the artistic spirit of the art club. 
Um, if you're someone who, and Nancy outlined a lot of those fields, you know, graphic design, architect, you know, stuff like that. If you contact me and Julia, we can talk to you. And, and if you send like, if you send me your resume, Paula, I can look and I can sort of get a sense of if the committee would consider you an, an uh, arts professional member, for instance. Um, and then Marguerite asked, um, can you share uh, who is currently on the member artist committee? Um, so Nancy outlined all the individuals who are on the arts qualification committee, and those are the individuals who vet the applications for artist member and um, arts professional member. So that list that Nancy, Nancy showed, and we're recording this, so you can access that again, and I can give you that list if you, if you want to know the names. Um, those are the individuals who are on the arts qualification committee that vets the applications. The membership committee is a separate committee, and Judy Vilmaine, who is co-chair. Judy, would you like to unmute and tell people who's on that committee? Yes, the membership committee is chaired. Uh, I'm the vice chair and Joan McConey is the chair. Uh, Kathy Terrell, Birch Coffey, Kate Chute, hmm, Susie Reeves, uh, Paige McGratton, Dawn Robertson are all on that committee. Great. And if you don't know two people at the art club, you know, then you can contact Julia or Michael and they'll contact us and we, members of the membership committee will meet with you and vet you and talk to you and help you out and be happy to do that. Okay, thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next question is from David who says, I would probably include some master copies in my 30, although not in my top 10, possible. Um, when it comes to master copies, that is a great question. Um, I would say to you, David, if you would email me um, like images and, as examples so that I can um, answer that question more specifically, um, I would like to see what you're talking about before I give like a firm answer. At the art club, as sort of a general rule in the gallery, we do not, uh, artists do not show things that are copies, whether they may be master copies, or it has to be original work, um, which I know is a very broad and sort of vague sounding answer. Um, so if I could see the type of work you're talking about, I can tell you if it would be acceptable, but I would have to see it and, and get a better understanding of it. So I don't want to give like a sort of plenary answer to that question. Um, like as one example, um, if a work is, and this, I know this is not a master copy, but I'm just using it as an example um, to illustrate the sort of logic behind it. If a, an image is made using a recognizable, you know, like published photograph that does not belong to the artist and they have not made substantial changes to it, that would not be acceptable. Um, but again, it's a very like case by case basis. So if you would email me, please feel free to email me and I'll be happy to look at your work and, uh, and then I can talk to Nancy and we can sort of consult about what would be the best process for you. Um, and then from Mariah, um, just clarifying artist professionals, uh, arts professionals that work in more administrative or behind the scenes role like coordinators, marketers, visitor services, et cetera, are considered as patron members. So that's a good question. Um, with um, arts professional members, that's something else that is, um, I think like Nancy and I both have sort of said, is sort of taken on a case by case basis um, because you know the, the whole profession of the arts is so big and there's so many different types of people who work in the arts. Um, the key thing I think, and Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, is that as long as your full-time job, your full-time job is in the arts, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like on the front end of it. Um, and again, this is probably a question where like, if you sent us your resume, we could look at it and tell you what the best status of application would be for you. And we're happy to do that. That way you don't have to go into it sort of blind and guessing which application status. We're happy to answer that question. Um, but yeah, we've had, you know, gallery owners, um, you know, museum professionals like Claudia, you know, so we have a whole range and gamut of people who are in that status but sometimes it needs sort of a one-on-one -on -one answer. But so please feel free to email me and, and I'll be happy to look at your resume. Um, a question from Barb, can you share anything about member demographics with regard to age? Just wondering if membership is mostly retired people, currently working professionals, et cetera. That's a great, great question. Um, 
I can get you the specific uh, demographics from our membership services coordinator. I would say, and the way that, and again, you know, Nancy, feel free to interrupt. Um, the way that I tend to frame it to people who ask about the art club is, I think the majority of our members tend to be people who are, you know, I think our median age right now is like 55 or something like that. And the reason for that is that I think people like to join the art club when they can make the most use of it. And the people who are members at the art club are there all the time. They are there like constantly, not that you have to be if you join the art club, but they are there so much that it is like a second home to many members of the art club. They're there in the morning, they're there for class, they're there for lunch, they're there for evening programs. You know, they host their, you know, children's weddings and christenings and you name the event, they host all that stuff there. Um, so I think a lot of people like to wait until they can use it. So I think that explains why the demographic is a little bit older. Um, but that being said, we are currently um, in the midst of working on like a fellowship program and on a residency program. So we're working on all kinds of different things all at the same time. But Nancy, do you want to say anything else about demographics? Um, no, but I will say that, um, especially during during COVID, when, you know, everyone was all locked up and um, certainly the art club was no different until um, until we weren't and we were um, doing our best to, um, you know, mask up and, so, and distance. And um, I can't tell you the number of people who came to me and said, the art club saved me, that it was just such a great place to be um, during that time when everyone was isolated. Mm -hmm. And that really stuck with me, it stuck with me because I thought, wow, you know, that's really, that's really important. It's really important to feel like you belong somewhere. And, um, you know, I always say that, you know, you look at that big green door and it can be very intimidating because it's so large. And believe me, it's just as heavy as you when you go to open <laughs> it. But um, the minute you walk through there, you feel like you're home. I mean, there's no question about it. And I've been a member for, for quite a while now. And I know that, I know everybody feels the same way. Um, people come in, they, it's, it's like you see people there every day, taking classes, having lunch, just, enjoying each other's company and it is it is truly a gem it really is a gem um i don't know if uh judy vilmaine if you would like to say a few words about yes i mean i feel so lucky every time i go there i take classes and i teach classes and i would say in every class the age range usually there's you know one or two people under 50 but mostly people are in their 50s 60s some in their 70s so, I mean, it does skew older, but you know, you get the whole, the whole age range. Yeah. Um, but mostly, mostly people who are towards the end of their career or already retired for the most part, I would say. Yeah. And um, everyone feels, everyone says the same thing. They just feel so lucky <clears throat> every time they walk in there and take classes and, or have lunch or, mm -hmm. or teach That's a great. class. Thank you both. That's excellent. Um, another question um, from Carol, which is, a, this is a great question. Um, I assume the five framed pieces that are presented in person cannot be within the digital pieces submitted. Is that true? I would say, and again, Nancy, feel free to like tell me that I'm wrong. I think, and I was just saying this to someone who inquired about this today, that, you know, if you did like all 30 pieces that you're allotted in the digital, if you include those five framed pieces also in the digital, it's sort of nice because it, it helps the committee understand how your work reproduces in a photograph. You know, they're looking at the work in person and they're looking at photographs. And sometimes, you know, photography can either make artwork look much better than it looks in person or it can make it look much worse than it looks in person. You know, it obviously doesn't look the same. So there's no rule against that. I think it, it's helpful to see it in the digital as well. Do you think that, Nancy? I absolutely, yeah, I absolutely yeah. agree with you. Um, I think that, you know, if you have 30 images um, and the work is, you know, consistent that you would be able to include that the five frame pieces as well. And it, it does give us a sense of, you know, comparing the digital image versus the, the um, in-person um, framed piece. Yeah, it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And then another question from Gary is, would you mind repeating the benefits um, for exhibiting artists and arts professionals, RE exhibits, classes, et cetera? Sure. So at the, the key difference between exhibiting artists versus arts professional is that exhibiting artists are the individuals who um, are, are our primary exhibitors at the art club. Um, so the way our scheduling stands right now, exhibiting artists are able to be in a group show, which is two to four people. They're able to do that once every two years, and they're able to do a solo show once every five years. Um, and then we do two big members exhibitions with prizes, one in the fall and one in the winter, and we'll get like a notable juror. So those are um, unjuried members exhibition. So each artist member can put in one piece and then it's juried for, um, one of them has $6,000 in prizes and one has $5,000 in prizes. Um, so we do that twice a year. We do a class and staff show in uh, January and that's for anyone who has taken a class at the art club, any member who's taken a class at the art club over the last year. So that's something that arts professionals can participate in. Um, and then sometimes we do a summer exhibition for members, sometimes we don't. Um, and then, um, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh, members get a discount on our national show. Um, and then our dining and private event stuff is all for members and their guests. So that's another big component of it, but we can sort of illustrate that more for you. Um, so Nancy asked if we could um, do a little introduction with the committee members now. And then if you have questions while we're, sort of working through the committee members and having the committee members, you know, share their individual points of view about, you know, um, the jurying process. Um, please feel free to keep putting questions in the chat and then I'll go back to them after where we've done the introductions with the committee as well. So, um, so I think um, if we if we can start with, because um, I have them all right here in alphabetical <laughs> order, um, <laughs> um, we can go to Sandra Basile. So we want to hear from our committee, um, basically, on what is your personal criteria evaluation when you're looking at a portfolio or an application that comes in? What is it that you're looking for? Sandra. And just remember to click un unmute. Unmute. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to first say that um, I'm relatively new to this committee, and I have been impressed from the get-go about just uh, the leadership, Nancy's leadership, Michael's support, Julia's organization, the process, the protocol, the goodwill. Uh, it's, a, it's very well organized. It's... Um, and it's very fair and it's mostly, you know, wanting to expand our membership. Um, it's not really trying to keep people out. It's more like wanting people to join. And um, so I guess what I look for personally is something that draws me in, that makes me want to look more closely and really think about what the artist is thinking about and um, have some sort of unique take or vision. It, it doesn't matter to me at all what medium or you know, style a person uses, as long as there's something intriguing about um, their take on the piece. And if something personal kind of in a way comes across. And, um, of course, the sort of presentation is very important too. I think what well, the other thing that's cool is that um, most of the members have very different orientations and backgrounds. And so we complement one another in terms of what we're looking for and what we feel more um, able to comment on. And, um, and so that's, that's what I do. <laughs> Thank you. So just to let you know, Sandra is a mosaic artist. She does beautiful mosaics. She just came down from a show. Well, just came down from a show, right? Yeah. Sandra, like- It seems um, like it, a year ago, it but more than that, now. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it was a beautiful show. And- um, Can I just add I, one more thing? Sure. For those of you considering um, applying, the things that you get, 
and I've only been a member for about five years, are it's, it's very hard to you know make a list of them. But more than anything, I think you get support. And I think at, for all of us, you know, we work kind of in solitude. And so the support is really significantly important, I think, and the community and the staff. And the other thing is the exhibition possibilities. It's a, they're fantastic gallery spaces, beautifully installed, and there's always a crowd mm -hmm. and um, people sell well. So between those and the talks and the classes, it's, 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 a, it's a really good place for an artist to, to live. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Um, let's go to Del, Del Beret Bach. Am I on? Yes. You're on. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm a new member to the, uh, the committee too. Uh, and I've been a member of the club for since about 2005. I, I look for, uh, well, we, we talked about this, but consistency is extremely important. I like to see um, uh, basically the artist's voice coming through their piece, a uniqueness that draws you in. This has been said before, but I think it's important. Um, as a professional artist, I know, I think it's important to be your own worst critic. So if you feel that if you are ready to apply, then and you can kind of think about it and you're saying, well, I don't know, then maybe you shouldn't apply right now. I would, what I would do is keep working until you, to that inner voice says to you, I'm ready to do this. This is the best I have at this particular time and uh, go for it. And I think uh, that's really what it is. It comes down to, don't try to be a jack of all trades. That's another thing that uh, I look for. I, I, I don't want to see, you know, I would say represent your best medium. If it's oil, put mostly that in. If it's uh, being a printmaker, put that in, a photographer, whatever it is. If it's all over the place, it, it can throw off the committee big time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, but as has been said, we, uh, we, we want to have you in the club. So, um, we will do our best and we, and we will give, I believe Nancy, so we will give uh, critiques. Mm -hmm. So uh, if for some reason you don't get in on a given time, we will uh, let you know why. So, but that's basically it. And uh, what I would say is, uh, and presentation is really big. A good frame can, if you can, consistency in frames, a lot of, a lot of artists do not they think about the work and they kind of let the framing go. And I've seen great artists do gorgeous pieces and the frame is falling apart. And I owned a gallery and so, and that was horrible. And so that's a very important thing. Degas once said, the frame is the artist's reward. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Del. Um, all right, how about Claudia? Claudia Inicelli. Claudia is a um, arts professional. So um, there's one arts professional on this committee and that's myself. So I'm gonna focus on the arts professional um, and what I look for when I'm looking at that. Um, so first off, it was said before, it really needs to be your primary career. Um, it needs to in some way be linked to the arts, like not a hobby. Um, and that's, that's important right off you know, with your resume. Um, the achievement of your success uh, within your career that comes through with your portfolio, with seeing the consistency, uh, excellent examples of your projects, of the look of, and the work you've done over the years. Um, so what makes an arts professional um, application really unique is there's a lot of room for individuality that comes through. Um, and it comes through with your portfolio, seeing the many, many different types of um, people that have those links to the art world. 
someone who works, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna focus on just thinking about the museum world because most of the people who worked at the MFA actually are arts professional. They've done this their whole life. They've worked in many areas and it's a definite link to the arts and the support of the arts. Um, but somebody who does marketing or fundraising in the museum world, well, that portfolio is going to look very different than, say, mine as a textile conservator, which has examples of actual exhibition work and collections care work. Um, so the other thing I just wanted to touch on that came up through this uh, conversation is age. And I, I think age doesn't really make so much of a difference because what we all have in common is a, a common um, a common interest, whether you're working in pastels or um, as an arts professional or you're a painter taking those classes, we have so much to learn from one another. And we have so much to learn from people who are young and people who are older. And there's been different periods in the art club where we have um, a group of really young people who bring a lot of energy to the club. So I don't think that um, if you're comfortable not caring about age, I don't think that that should hold you back from being a member. Thank you. Well said. Um, how about Craig Mastin? Let me unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Great. Great. Well, uh, I'm a. Um, I've, I've been a, a member of the Province Art Club for uh, probably 15 years or more, uh, and I work in oils and and watercolors. Do some etch, a little etching. And drawing, I, and I teach a, a figure life uh, class at the at the Providence Art Club. Um, one thing I'd like to say is, um, in regards to knowing where you stand uh, in terms of of, um, of, of, of applying as, a, as an exhibiting artist member, well, well not a requirement, um, uh, and more for your benefit than than it's not a requirement, but more for your benefit than than any kind of uh, of of, uh, of requirement for the for the committee is it's helpful to develop i think a record of submissions and acceptances to juried shows uh there's a there's a plethora of of, of galleries and art organizations in rhode island and across new england that have that have juried shows uh and you can enter on, online to various kind of shows as well there's all sorts of ways to be able to submit your work to be for, for evaluation by other people and and you can see uh, in in your record of of, uh, of of going to these shows and submitting these shows, uh, if you're, if you're accepted by by uh, other artists, and you can see what other artists are are submitting to these shows and how your work stands in comparison to those other artists, it gives you some idea of, of whether or not uh, you might be ready uh, for for um, for uh, artist membership uh, in in, uh, in in the organization. Uh, so to avoid disappointment. So again, it's just more for your benefit than for the committee. I think it gives you some idea of, of where you stand. Uh, uh, so as far as um, criteria, for, for me, it's it's the uh, it's only one show quality of execution, consistency of style for all the pieces that you submit. Don't if you have some weak pieces, that, some pieces that make sure that everything you're submitting is is of, of high quality and so is, so is a, a body of work. That is that is consistent and high in quality of execution, uh, and all the style, as other people have said, has a style that's that's not imitative, but but uh, but identifiable as uniquely yours. That's what I think we look for to find something that stands out as as a certain consistency of style that runs across all the pieces that you that you submit. Um, and that's about all that I would want to say. Other than the fact that, that I, one thing I want to mention is that is that. Um, if you're not sure you're ready, as, as Dell said, um, you know, to join as a, as a patron member, uh, it doesn't require a portfolio, uh, and it gives you a chance to get to know the club and the members of the club, both the patron members as well as the artist members, and you'll develop a, 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 a rich community to give you feedback as to what kind of, how, how you stand as, as an artist. It makes it sometimes a, a sort of easier step to know that you're ready for uh, for the way in which this club operates, and what they're looking for in, in the kind of shows that they have. Uh, you have looking at coming to the shows we have at the club we can also give you some idea of where you of where you stand in relationship to other artists here, here as well. 
So that's all I have to have to say. Absolutely. Thank you, Craig. And to Craig's point, um, patron members who are um, or arts professional members who are taking classes, um, there is a um, a um, a staff and um, a class show. So there are opportunities where patron members are able to exhibit works in those um, in those um, areas. Um, Mimo, Gordon Riley. Hi, Mimo. Unmute. Unmute. Okay, there I am. Is that good? Yes. Um, yeah. I, I. It's so interesting. It. I think that it's very important to know that. That I mean, I know it's been said already, but, but. We want we do want you to be part of of this community that is that is so special and and sometimes we have turned people down because it feels as if there you know there's one piece from over here and one piece from over there and one piece from over there and and you know each of them is you know has some worth but together they don't project a certain a certain vision. And, um, and so sometimes we say, come and take classes and then reapply. You know, the classes are so important and you don't have to be a member to take the classes. And it, and it, does, um, it does allow you to get some idea and to meet some people there. And, um, and I think they're, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of the classes. Um, it's uh, the, you don't have to stay in the same meet. I mean, I think people may say, well, how do I know? Do I need to have 10 that are all, you know, pastels of flowers? I mean, and, and no, that's not, that's not the consistency. It's like you can use different media, but, but it, but it just needs, to, I, I guess it's, it's a little hard to describe, but, um, but, we know when we can see that there is, I mean, people have used consistency. I think that's, that's right. But I think the vision is also really important. Judy. What I notice sometimes with um, prospective members is they seem to think that they should be presenting a breadth of work, but really we're looking more for depth, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so, it's not that we're necessarily wanting to see that you can paint in watercolor and pastel and oil and, and you know landscapes and portraits and still life. Really, it's more like almost like okay, if you were preparing for a show, what would you show? You know, and, and so you want a, a smaller, more in depth, not smaller in terms of number, but smaller in terms of range. Right, and I think to your point, um, Mimo and Judy, um, it's not about we don't want to see everything you can do. Mm -mm. We don't want to see all everything that you can do. We want to see, um, and and to Mimo's point again, um, if you think of a, a master, a master's work, and and they're working, they're doing landscape and they're doing still life. Well, you know that those works are done by the same artist, right? Yeah. You know because of the palette. You know because of the brushwork. There are a whole bunch of things that are consistent in that work that say, this is a Van Gogh or, um, you know, or, or a, a, a Bertha Marisol. I mean, you know, based on, as I said, the brushwork, the palette, the, sometimes it's the, it's the, um, it is the, the, um, the topic. It is a subject matter because there are artists who just only paint still life or, or landscapes or portraits. Um, but we're not looking to see everything you can do in terms of, oh, I can do watercolor and I can do pastel and I can do sculpture. And I mean, I don't know any of us that can do all of that and do it really well. So um, Mimo, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? Yeah, I think that, that does it. Okay, then let's move on to uh, David Whitbeck. Well, I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse to be at the end of the alphabet, but oh, um, no. <laughs> pretty much everything has been said. Um, 
you know, this was always a problem of sitting in the back of the class when I was in third grade and they discovered that I had myopia and that's why I seem to be stupid. But anyway, um, I look for originality, uh, good composition, uh, consistency of vision, um, and uh, technical competence. Uh, those are the things that impress me the most. In terms of things like press clippings, that's one thing I wish they would take off. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a press clipping in my life. Um, and, and as much as I respect Craig, jury shows, I, I don't know, I've been painting for 20 some years and I think maybe I've gotten two like third places or something like that. So yeah, a lot of jurying is just one person's opinion about one piece of work. So that's not important to me. I just want to see a, some consistent original work. Um, and it, along with that consistency, sometimes we get uh, portfolios where you get five pieces three of which are terrific and two of which are kind of eh. and and that's what makes us sometimes wonder does the person submitting the work know the difference between those things and it's it's kind of a kind of a, a, a negative so uh, other people have said it if you're not sure you're ready to apply if you're not sure you can produce um a consistent range of work, um, maybe you should wait and take classes. Um, um, one other thing that nobody else has mentioned, uh, having been a victim of this with another arts organization uh, somewhere where I was rejected because people didn't like my work, um, that's not one of my criteria. It's not necessary. You should do what you do and be who you are. I don't, you know, there, there have been People submitting work was work I just didn't like at all, but it was artistically great. It was very, very well done. So um, yeah, I would say, don't try to please the committee, just uh, please yourself and do the best work you can. I think that is great advice, actually. I think that's really wonderful. It's always be true to yourself, first and foremost. Do not try to impress the committee um, because, you know, to be honest, the committee will see right through it. But um, yeah, don't try to impress the committee. Um, be consistent in your artistic voice. I think too, too often we will see work that comes in where it's, it's a little disjointed. And so it may look like, well, this is a different artist. There are three different artists in this portfolio. And I think you can pretty much tell that when you're looking at your own work, when you're critiquing your own work. Um, so that's, that is one of the big things you know, for me. The other big thing for me is the um, consistency and framing. So I feel as though if you respect your work, you are going to um, put as, as much time and effort and thought into your framing as you do the painting or whatever you're submitting um, because presentation is only going to enhance that work. Um, I'm trying to think of what else everybody else said is I think is, is spot on. Um, and again, to what David was saying in terms of jurying and juried shows, you know, you can have, you can submit a piece to one show and you all know as artists that you may win a first prize at that show, but then at another show, you won't even get in. So, you know, it's, it's very um, subjective. But then again, to Craig's point, um, to show that you, you, have, you have kind of gone the route of, of um, submitting your work to these shows. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know, if it's juried, if it's non-juried. Um, but that you are interested in showing your work and getting it out there. Um, so I think that that's probably all that I would have to say. But again, and everyone I think said this, we want you to be comfortable with submitting your work. We are a, we are a group of artists. Um, we are welcoming and we certainly would love for everybody to submit their work and be accepted. Um, that's who we are. That's what we're about. We've been in existence for over 140 years. And, um, you know, we're really going strong and we're doing a whole lot more. Let me just, let me just say that in terms of uh, reaching out to the community in various ways. Um, 
And so I hope that we will see some of you submit. I hope that we'll see some of those names come up in applications. And again, if you have any, are there any of the, I, are, let me stop. Are there any other questions, Mike? Yeah, so there's a few more questions. Sorry, that we're, that we're sorry. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. um, so thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Um, okay. I think that you can see, you know, for everyone who's here, I mean, I think you can see from all the various points of view that were just shared that this committee, the committee that reviews application, very thoughtful group of people. They each come to this with their own point of view. They have very spirited discussions, but they really think about it very carefully and they don't flippantly say yes or no to anyone. And they were all saying about, you know, if you don't get in the first time, you know, try again. Nancy Gosher Thomas writes very nice letters, like for people who don't get accepted the first time to give them guidance on why that was. So that's another nice thing about the art club. That's not true of many arts organizations that when they reject people, they don't give them any feedback at all. Um, so some of the other questions that I saw were, um, one question was, um, is size considered um, in, in the pieces in the application? In most exhibitions at the art club, when you're in a group show at the art club, we don't make any specification about what size things should be. So you can submit things um, for consideration of any size. I you know, would ask you to be considerate that we have very limited storage. So if your work is enormous, maybe consider showing us things that are not huge because I don't have anywhere to store it while we're you know, waiting for the jury. Um, so maybe put your larger things in the digital portfolio and show us more moderately sized things in person. That would be my only personal request. But other than that, so there's no, you know, preferred size or anything. It's whatever size you tend to work in is what's best. Um, another question was who can take classes, members and non-members? That's a great question. Um, so all of our regular classes are classes that are like 10 weeks long and eight weeks long. Those are open to members first. And most of them fill up with members first. Most of them, they don't get non-members in them because they fill with members immediately. Um, our summer workshops are often open to non-members and a lot of our kind of special kind of odd and end classes end up being open to non-members um, when there aren't enough members to take them. But as a non-member, you can only take, um, I think you can only take one class at the art club and then you can't take a class again. So. Um, choose your class carefully if you choose to take a class as a non-member. Um, so classes tend to be for members. Um, all of our gallery programs though are open to the public. Um, and then uh, the question, which I think was sort of answered uh, in the various presentations, is it considered acceptable to provide more than one media representing your best work? If you are you know, equal parts oil painter and pastelist, then, and you wanna split it between those things, that's fine. But like everybody was saying, don't try to like spread it across five media to show everybody that you can do all those things because that will not work in your favor. It will work very much against your favor. I can tell you from having seen this happen multiple times at this committee, if you're primarily an oil painter and you anticipate that you're gonna show oil paintings, just show, show us oil paintings, that's all you need to do. And in terms of the consistency question, what Judy Vilmain said is exactly correct. You wanna think of the presentation that you're giving as like a mini exhibition. And um, does anyone wanna show alongside someone who's like doing everything all over the place and like it's just complete scattershot? No, you know, they wanna show it with someone who has a consistency to what they're doing. Um, there are several questions about fees. Like one is um, what's the difference in monthly rate between patron and exhibiting artist? Um, exhibiting artist members and arts professional members pay the same dues um, and it is you should look online to get the exact number but it's a substantial discount from patron um, and then the other question is are the fees paid annually um, so there's monthly dues and then the initiation fee can be split up into quarterly payments and the initiation fee is one time when you first join and the monthly dues are something that you you know you continue to pay um, but with Questions about fees, um, I can put you in touch with Julia because she can talk more about the fee schedule and exactly what a monthly bill tends to look like for people. Um, and uh, if there are any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat now and we'll, I'll answer them for you. Um, I also want to say, Michael, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure. I just want to say that if, if anyone here has any suggestions about this presentation and what we can do to make it better for you, let us know put it in the chat or send an email to Michael. I think that will help us going forward um, and what we, you know, what we can offer as, as a committee. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, I would say, oh, 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 good question. Okay, so what are the requirements to be a patron member? Good question. So a patron member, um, 
does not need to show a portfolio. A patron member needs a proposer and a seconder. Um, and does a patron member, do they need to send in a resume or anything? Or is it, it's just the sponsor letters? I think it's just the sponsor. Yeah. So usually what the committee does, like if- They just if, fill out the application. So they give a little bit of information. Yeah. So a very, a very minimal amount of information. Um, and what the committee usually does is like, Again, like if you're someone who's not feeling comfortable applying as an exhibiting artist or arts professional, you can join as a patron. And we have a lot of people who transfer status. We have a lot of people who are, you know, we have people who have been patron members for 20 years and then change their status, you know, because they feel like they've worked their way up to it and they really would like to do that. Um, so there, and there's absolutely no problem with that. We do it all the time. Um, and in the average month, I mean, the amount of applications that come in each month is quite variable. I mean, some months, you know, we'll have three applications, some months we'll have five applications or 10 applications, you know, we've had, you know, some months we've had that many. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, a number of them will be transfers of status from patron. Um, uh, and then uh, one comment was, an, an example in the future might be to include in the presentation, what something is that is scattershot. Yeah, uh, that's a good, that's a good, that's that's a good piece good. of feedback. One that's thing I would say is like, you know, this group of, you know, eight or nine people who are on this committee, it is sort of like, you know, the Supreme Court and that they're unanimous like 80% of the time, you know, it's it's really, there's not, it's not like there's a lot of disagreement, like they're unanimous a lot. And when like Mimo was saying, like, it's sort of hard to define what we mean when we say like consistency or whatever, it's like, you know it when you see it. Like when you see that it's consistent, you know, and it's sort of a hard thing to kind of define. Judy? Well, if I'm looking around at the Zoom, like I can, I would see, I would immediately know if it was your work, Nancy, or Michael, or David, or Craig. You know, so sometimes if you're a little earlier in your career, that might not quite be the case. But mm -hmm. I, you know, that's the kind of consistency where somebody's like, oh, yeah, that's a Nancy Osher time. Right. right. And it tends to work itself out. It tends to, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, um, if anyone has any last questions, please put them in. But I would say, like, I think, again, it came across in Nancy's presentation and all the comments that you heard from all the people in this committee who won't say it for themselves, I don't think. But all of the people in this committee are very nice. You know, no one is no one's trying to be scary. You know, Julie is very nice. Yeah, I wait think a minute. I'm, Hold on. Except David Whitbeck. David can be a little <laughs> frightening. <laughs> Kidding. But you need a bad cop to every <laughs> cop, I guess. Um, Julie is very nice. You know, I'm very nice. You know, everybody wants to be helpful and, and to be supportive. So please, again, like Nancy said, and, and like we all said, don't hesitate to email us and we can put you in touch with the right person and, you know, anything you need, we're happy to help with it. And like I said, you know, open invitation, you want to come and walk through the club with me and I'll show you all the rooms that we have. I'd be happy to do that as well. Um, and if any questions come up later tonight, please email me and I can put you in touch with Nancy or with Judy or whoever the appropriate person is. Happy to um, answer any questions anybody has. So please, by all means. Well, that was touch. great. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you, Nancy Gosher Thomas, for organizing this very wonderful presentation. Thank, thank you to you, all Michael. the committee members. Thank you to everyone who's here. Um, and we will have a video of this available. So if you have friends who weren't able to make it and would like the video, we can provide that to them. And we'll send the video out to all of you so you can watch it again if you have any questions that you missed. Okay. okay. Thank you Bye all. Bye, everyone. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye.